word. You ever heard somebody make this statement? I'm telling you, it's hard in this day and time to be a Christian. It is no harder to be a Christian now than it's ever been. And the truth is, if you want to be honest before God, in most places, it's far harder to be a Christian than it is here. So hush your belly aching. Now, that was a good place to say amen to a statement that didn't, you just didn't sit with you, with you. Now, when he talks about affliction, let's see if we can get an insight to it. First of all, I believe he wants us to know that his affliction came from the outside. See, from reading all of Psalm 119, we're already up to verse 112. The psalmist was the object of the active dislike of a number of powerful and influential enemies. So there was this um, outward affliction, persecution that came against him. But now listen to me carefully. If you're not careful, you can be afflicted from the outside and it can cause great grief on the inside. Notice that the Bible teaches that his affliction came from the inside. He says here in verse number 107, I'm afflicted very much. And then he, he asks this. He says, revive me, O Lord, according to your... Why does it need to be revived? Listen to me carefully. He had allowed the circumstances of life to get him down. Who's not been there? Who's not been somewhere? I'm telling you, if it wears on you long enough, I'm telling you, it can affect you emotionally, mentally, spiritually, physically. It can affect you. So God's word, here's what he's reminding us of. This is great truth here. God's word ministers to our inner person, even to our spirit. It fortifies our hearts and souls, and it revives us. It breathes new life into us. What is it when a person gets away from the Lord, backslides, and God ministers through his word, brings them back to himself? What is that other than God revives that individual? So it assures us we are known, loved, and wanted by the most important person in the world, none other than Almighty God. So it links our weakness to his strength. It preserves my life. But then he moves from, here's what I'm trying to do. God, God's illuminated me, and I want to respond right. And kind of here's my performance. I'm trying to perform that which I promised. Now, as a result of my stance, it's caused persecution. I mean, you, you can just be a Christian when someone begins to say, why don't you partake in this, partake in that? And you say, no, I'm not going to do that. You may not even say, I'm not going to do it because I'm a Christian. But oftentimes someone will take a cheap shot at you because you're not like the rest of the world. And we shouldn't be. And then he moves into making a statement about prayerful worship. Uh, look, what, look what he says there. He says in verse number 8, he says, Except I pray the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. Teach me your judgments. Free will offering. <clears throat> it was an offering of thanksgiving that was not required. God has so worked in his heart, he just said, uh, I just want to give this offering, and it was an offering from his mouth. It expressed the gratitude of the worshiper. C can anybody agree with me tonight? One of the evidences of being filled with the Holy Spirit based on Ephesians 5 is gratitude. We ought to have the attitude of gratitude. We've all got much to be thankful to God for. So he's asked God to accept a free will offering. What he's saying is, God, I'm, I'm about to offer something in way of praise for my lips, and I want it to be favorably received from you. So accept it. So as God renews his spirit, he promises to praise him. And the, these are his praises for relief. Uh, they're what the book of Hebrews calls the sacrifice of praise. Hebrews 13, 15 says, Therefore, by him let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. So now with an open heart, full of gratitude to God, he asked, and teach me your judgment. God, for what you have done, I praise you with my mouth. I'm grateful with my heart, and I pray you continue to teach me your judgments. Let me tell you what I learned from this text about worship. Worship makes us receptive to the Word of God. After we've opened our hearts to him in praise, we just did. We just opened our hearts to him in praise, we're now ready to receive what he has for us. And so here is one. Listen to what he's doing. He's praising God with his lips. He said, I offer a free will offering to you with my mouth. And then he said, teach me your judgments. He's ready to receive. 